the enders of that streak here tonight. The Tigers five and four, the Blue Devils number two in the country, nine and one, and they win the opening tip. It goes to Javin Deloria. And he, he told us that he felt like his guys thought they could do more than they actually could do, but they had opportunity to scrimmage and practice and get up and down and try to shake off the rust as we see the back door cut. Zero on the board. And you mentioned that layoff, and this is what happens when you go that long of a stretch without being able to play a game against other competition. Practice is completely different, but you can never simulate game. All of these guys have really had to settle for everything along the perimeter thus far in this game. Stevens gets another reverse lay in his second going from left to right. He's now got six of their eight. Now well, there's a first time for everything. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. Thank for you. you. Thank you for acknowledging <laughs> that first time. Here comes Barrett. If long distance doesn't work, close range gets the job done. Four to shoot. Morales on the move, gets turned away by Delorier and Reddish. Jones on the break has options. Zion rejected, and Delorier fades and scores. Llewellyn at the point, first spotted by the Princeton staff when he came to their camp as a sophomore. He's got his eyes up and finds a Ririguzo onto the floor for Duke. With Jack White and Alex O'Connell as well. Schwiegers three drops through. But another opportunity created by the transition. The pressure from Duke forcing R.J. Barrett really to have to guard a point guard. And which is not his strength. And he just bullied his way through Llewellyn. He's got five now. Mississauga, Ontario. <laughs> I'd like That's why it's your job. Kennedy has it stolen. Williamson goes one on two. The lefty lay-in is good, and it's a two-point game. The freshman from State College, Pennsylvania, who hit three threes last game against Iona, has come in, number five in black. From the near wing, it's Miles Stevens. One of the guys that Coach Henderson will rely upon all year, one of the veterans who has continued his stellar play from a season ago. White tries his hand and knocks it down. How do you beat Duke? You have to pretty much make them play from the perimeter and hope that they don't make shots because when they get in the paint and tackle the way that they do, that's when they're extremely dangerous. Backdoor feed, you had a lot of eyes off the basketball there. That they've had at Princeton. Now, I'm not sure if that's during his tenure as the head coach at Princeton or in general, but he made a, a big statement with that one as Cam Reddish makes a huge statement knocking down the three. They're looking inside for Bolden, but the zone has collapsed against him. O'Connell from deep. Got it! And it's 24-18. Duke has done. They've cleaned up on the defensive, defensive end where Princeton was getting all the backdoor cuts that allowed them to open up the offense. Duke has done a great job of the last few possessions cleaning that up. And speaking of great job. Wow. <laughs> to the finish with the lob, not the traditional lob. And you see Morales come in and really get underneath them. And that's a great call right there by Ted Valentine along the baseline. Maybe ejecting from this seat at halftime, who knows? 27-18. <laughs> hey, Ricky Bobby's dad admitted in the movie that he was drunk when he told him that. That's just a fact. A much needed three there to make it a six point game once again. And still in the zone and now Duke finding a way to get the ball inside the paint against the zone defense. Shows you his value on this team and you know why he's been so successful in just the two games that he's played thus far because he's able to handle that pressure on the outside just like R.J. Barrett. Air Barrett is able to be successful when he touches the paint. Was one of the reasons, I didn't say the main reason, just one. <laughs> but that really shows you where we are. You talk about R.J. and Zion as Possibly the odd, the odd couple with Felix and Oscar. This is a Ricky Bobby, and you're talking about Harry Potter. It doesn't get much different than that. It's true. You got to have a creative mind to enjoy all of those things. 33-23, Duke out in front, looking to extend its non-conference home winning streak to 146 straight, and it gets a lot easier when they can score like that. The kick out for DeRozier. Now Kennedy, a great three-point shooter, has his shot altered by Barrett. Excellent defensive possession from Duke. Now in all of the categories that you expect from Duke as Cam Reddish knocks down another big three. So much about this Duke team, but many people probably wouldn't recognize that they actually lead the country in block shots at seven and a half block shots per game. And you think about Duke and the offensive juggernaut that they are, as you analytics people would like to talk about, efficiency not so great in the first half. We all use numbers, it's just how we use them. <laughs>
I take it you're not a student of Bill James. <laughs> Who? <laughs> Speaks for itself. Stevens drives. Lawrenceville, New Jersey. It's a team that certainly hopes to contend in the Ivy League this year. Didn't make the postseason field in the Ivy League tournament last year. It kind of weighs on your mind, especially if you go into halftime not having made one. You know you want to see that basketball go through the hoop sometime early in the second half. I just saw this great post-game comment from Matt Painter. How much of a better teammate you become. And certainly, Coach K feels he's a great teammate. It's just robbery from Reddish, and Barrett flies down the floor to jam it home. Two players converge, Barrett emerges and pulls it back out. I like your point. Well, let's see who got it. Well, oh, there's no question about okay. that one. <laughs> Top 25 team coming up next here on ESPN2 as well as Buffalo travels to Syracuse to take on the Orange and try and hand them their second straight defeat. Special expression there for Mitch Henderson kind of says it all. Williamson, his second three-point attempt of the game and just his third made three of the year. Shows his scoring prowess there. He's got seven. Yeah, love Jaden Llewellyn. It considered a four-star recruit as Cam knocks down another one. They go to 10 and one before they've got a top 25 showdown Thursday night in New York City against Texas Tech. Miles Stevens steps out, hits the uncontested three. Stevens got off to a great start in this game. Had a big first half, nine points for him, but what Princeton really has been missing as R.J. Barrett hasn't missed much, if anything, here in this second half. Past few years in which, you know, and I, I, I use my hands using the air quotes and say the one and done era for the Blue Devils. We were talking about Duke defensively, and we talked about the block shots. We see another one for Marquise Bolden. I believe that could be three to four for him on the night. The eighth for the team. And it's O'Connell with the three-pointer. Fuels their offense. And again, they're able to get out and force teams to start their offense much further on the floor because they get out in passing lanes and deny to make sure that these players recognize and understand that it's an event for these fans to be able to travel from as far away as they do. And Davin Denari gets in for the easy dunk. During the day, you know, you see <laughs> dozens of people outside just going through the Duke Basketball Museum right up front of the Cameron Indoor. Williamson's got 15. Brace his team. How about you know, that? That is a very intellectual way of making up for a terrible yes, mistake. It was, was a quick backtrack and a whiteout. The Warrior slams with the right hand. Transition basketball, number one recruiting classes time and time again. This year it's about pressure defense and transition basketball. And of course, a number of highlights when they get to the rim. R.J. Barrett, Zion Williamson, Javon Delari. But defensively is where Coach Cage really most concerned about, about Gowar. If he can come out and give a similar level of defensive pressure that Trey Jones does, Division One basketball. Good choice by you with Nevada. I thought Kansas might be it, but... Block number nine. Um, part. <laughs> I wasn't going to mention that. <laughs> But, you know, and Coach Henderson talked to us about it before the game and told us that's really where he promptly disgraced <laughs> basketball in the city of Atlanta. But you did bring your shoes, which was impressive that you came prepared to play. And threw them in the garbage after him. There's the bucket for Goldwine. Play when you have a team with so many freshmen that get minutes and so valuable to your team, you have to have those veteran players like Marquise Bolden, like Jack White and Jab Delorier. And really are probably a calming influence for Coach K, guys that he knows have been in that environment he knows he can lean on. This is something we've seen before this year. Justin Robinson hitting a three. A tremendous amount of depth on this team, which is necessary as the season goes along. White with the steal. He wants it all. <laughs> Tippins there for O'Connell. One of their guys has been involved in one of those classes. If you look at Jack White, you know, in last year's class, Alex O'Connell. But then you think about the class before, Harry Giles, Jason Tatum. Far, and there could be more signing up as this season goes along. As it goes in recent years, some of the top players in the ESPN 100, because they've got options, there's Freiburg for three. And Coach Oates brings his team here, an opportunity, you know, for his wife who was recovering from her battle with cancer. Crystal, she's yeah. in remission at the time. Was in, and, and, 
concerns about the 10-day layoff between games may have been there over the first 20 minutes, but for these last 20, take on arguably the best defensive team in college basketball, Texas Tech, number 12 in the country, Thursday night at the Garden. Duke's got its third highest scoring total of the season. They dropped 118 in the opener against Kentucky, 113 against Stetson 17 days ago, and today they take care of Princeton 101 to 50.